So in this video, we are going to see how to use classic load, load balancer also called as elastic load balancer with AWS certificate manager ACM and with route 53 alias. So first of all, what we are going to do is go to certificate manager and then click on get started. And over here, we are going to click on request a public certificate and the domain name will be your route 53 domain name which you have purchased if you have so right now i have this if i go to my hosted zone public hosted zone i have a purchased a domain name so i'm going to utilize this domain so i'm going to go back to my certificate manager and then request a certificate for the www.domainname.com and i'll click on next for the validation, I'm going to select email validation and then click on review. So now when we click on confirm and request, we will get a email uh, for approving the certificate. So I'll go to my uh, Gmail account where it's registered and then approve the request from the email. So you'll get this email where you'll have the confirmation link. So I'm going to copy the link, paste it in my browser and then click on this I approve button. So this will approve our SSL certificate. So this will approve our SSL certificate and now we can utilize this certificate. So the next thing I'm going to do is I have two EC2 instances over here. They're just uh, basic web servers with HTTP installed on it, like Apache. So if I query this, if I go to this, their public DNS, it will take to their index page. So basically I want to put these two instances behind the load balancer, but keep in mind this both instances should have port 80 open because they are listening on port 80 and they have index.html page in it. Just two basic web servers. So now I'm going to go to my load balancers in the EC2 section and then click on create load balancers and then click on classic load balancer and I'm going to give my load balancer a name. So it's in the same VPC as my default VPC and my instance is also in the same VPC. This is not an internal load balancer, it will be external load balancer. If I click on enable advanced VPC configuration, it will let you choose the availability zones where your targets, your instances can reside or where you want your traffic to be routed by a load balancer, but I'm going to uncheck it. And then the load balancer listener protocol. So the listener, where would the load balancer listen to which port? So in our case, it will be HTTPS. So it will change the port to 443 and the instance will be listening to HTTP on port 80. So the load balancer will forward the traffic from 443 to port 80 over here. Click on assign security groups. I'm going to select an existing security group that I have. Basically this security group should have 443 open. Your instance security group should have port 80 open. So because your load balancer will forward the traffic from 443 to 80 but I mean you can combine both into one security group or you can have two separate security group. Ideally best practices to have two different security groups so that you don't have like unnecessary ports open. So this has 443 open from anywhere. Click on configure security settings and I'm going to choose our certificate that we just created. And we're going to keep the security policy as predefined security policy with this policy version. And then the SSL protocols, we're going to select all the TLS one, which are by default selected. You can't really modify anything over here. And then I'm going to click on configure health check. So for health check, ELB will uh, use a HTTP port 80 on the instance and query for index.html. And we have index.html on both the servers. Now this, uh, details are really important that once details the response timeout is five seconds so basically when ELB is querying your instance if it doesn't uh, get a response within five seconds it will be considered as 
a timeout and basically one health check failure interval i'm going to reduce it to 10 seconds basically elb will query your instance every 10 uh, or wait for 10 seconds between each consecutive health checks unhealthy threshold so if there are two health check failures two consecutive health check failures the instance will be marked as unhealthy healthy threshold so let me change it to let's say three so if there are three consecutive uh, healthy or positive health checks the instance will be marked as healthy so initially when the instance is uh, booting or it's connected to a load balancer after three health checks healthy health checks load balancer will mark the instance as healthy and then start serving traffic to that instance and the interval it's 10 seconds so basically it will wait for 10 seconds between each health check so now let's add instances so i'm going to select my two instances and over here enable cross zone load balancing basically if you want your elb to send traffic to different load uh, zones it can do that but in our case both of our instances are in 1b so it doesn't really matter but i would just select this as well click on enable cross enable connection draining so it's 300 seconds so basically if let's say if you want to uh, remove an instance for um, your ELB or if the ELB wants to remove an instance it will still wait for 300 seconds for all the existing requests to complete so that no incomplete requests are going on and an instance is removed from a load balancer so it will wait for 300 seconds for the for that particular request to complete so it says number of seconds to allow existing traffic to continue flowing so it's like enable connection draining so that's what connection draining is about click on add tags review and create and then click on create so now this will create your load balancer so initially if you see it's out of service so it will take uh, three health checks to pass for it to show you so the status is in service so just to recap while it's or one additional thing we can do is we'll go to route 53 and go to dashboards and go to hosted zones so i'm going to go to my public hosted zones and this is the domain that i've already purchased so i'm going to create a record set and then click on www or type www so this is www record set we'll click on alias and then we're going to select the elb we just created so this www record set or this domain entire domain will be pointing to this elb and then click on create so we have that now we'll go back and it's still out of service so once it's in service if you go to my domain name which h with https it should show one of the instances and if you click refreshing it will show different instances so let's just wait for like half a minute or so and then come back and then access our domain so now it shows the instance is in service so now let's go to my domain so i'm going to go to my domain and basically now it's showing us the index page so I'm clicking again it will go in almost a round robin fashion between the two instances keep in mind it has to be https because our load balancer is listening on port 443 and we have also our acm certificate uh, issued and load balancer has the certificate so just to recap we had created an acm certificate we already had two instances we created a load balancer with two instances and then we created a route 53 alias to point it to the load balancer and then when you go to the url which with https on it it will point to one of those instances so this is how you create a classic load balancer and use acm and route 53 with it we also saw the health check settings for the load balancer